Joining me now to discuss Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Kamala Harris, you know, let's not forget. Let's play this clip right here. She's been implicit in this and complicit in this cover up, too. Do we got that sound bite, guys? I'm not lying. <laughs> if there I'm was telling, a, but, but I'm telling but, you a fact. But if there ever is a problem, yeah. do you think that you could go tell the American public? Do you think in your role that you're, that you're in a position to do that? Of course, if necessary, but there's no need for that. I don't, there is a political argument that is being made that is not based on substance. They called it a witch hunt. They called it a conspiracy theory. They called it cheap fakes, right? You heard the White House uh, KJP saying it, and then uh, all the, the the cable news networks parroting exactly verbatim what KJP clearly told them to say as well. So, what do you think about this, Kamala Harris? Now she's this beacon of hope for the Democrats, but she's pro she's probably even worse than Joe. Oh, she is. She's. She's not very smart and she's very mean from what I understand. She's had an incredible turnover in her own office. It's kind of the unkept secret in, in D.C. Um, the problem you're really going to have, though, is the fact that if she doesn't get it, she'll be she'll throw the whole deck of cards from the race card at the American public and and claim whatever, um, however she can. If she doesn't get that, I suspect it's going to they'll crash and burn. They're going to try to hold Joe in as long as they can. But who you'll see nominated at the convention, that's who you'll know the deal was cut from the very beginning because I, these old Democrat operatives, they don't play checkers, they play chess. And they've been eyeballing this for quite some time. You've got, if you remember earlier last week, I think you had 10 or 20 Democrat congressmen who were signing a letter saying, that you know they were that he needs to step down. You really haven't heard much from them since then. They've mm. um, they used the carrot and the stick pretty well. I suspect they the DNC said we're going to cut your funding, but now the DNC's funding's been cut by all the um, the big time the tech moguls, the controllers. They've just seen that they're this puppet. The strings are getting cut from this puppet, and now they're in some really big trouble. I agree with you. I think this was all a setup to finally prove to. Joe Biden, his cohorts, once and for all, you're not up uh, up to the task, kind of like a soft coup in a way. Uh, Joe Biden, he's gaff after gaff. And recently, I want you to take a listen to what he said in a radio interview. And we're also learning that the radio host was, was uh, yeah. that the questions Given were, the questions. they gave yeah. him the questions and he still managed to screw it up. Take a listen, sir. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president First black woman mm -hmm. served with a black president. So now he's trans or transracial, transgender. He's a black woman. What do you think about that? Because, okay, you can say he misspoke, right? We all misspeak. I do it and I do it. I speak for a living. So do you, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, he, he, a president that misspeaks this often, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to launch those nuclear weapons. Oops, I'm sorry, we're in this war. You, you can't have a president that makes mistakes like this every single day. We're, we're becoming a joke. Yes, ma'am. The difference between you, me, and, and him is he is the leader of the free world, and you're exactly right. He does have the nuclear codes, and there has to be some question of his cognizant ability to, to comprehend anything going on in the world right now. And who's advising him? Who's close? You've got these 25-year-old guys, I'll say loosely guys. They have man buns, I'm sure, <laughs> and they've got his ear. They're all northern educated private schools, some public schools, but that's who's got his ear. And then and then you, you combine that in with any world event that would happen after eight o'clock at night, which apparently is his downtime. Um, you know, this is this is really a disaster waiting to happen. And you've got to know Xi Jinping and Putin are saying, man, we got seven months of this mischief and then Trump's going to come in there and 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 dominate. Because that's, you know, the, the thing in the debate, if you watch the debate, Trump laid out a very good vision for what he had for this country and for what he did for this country. And then all the Democrats can say is he lied. They never lay out any specifics of the line. Biden lied. He said nobody died. 13 Americans died at Afghanistan of his disastrous pullout. Trump had it set up to where it was going to work out perfectly. And they and they screwed it up. And they continuously screwed up everything. They released our fuel reserves. Um, I mean, who does that? The day before, the day before he announced that, 
I was in our, our committee and I was asking the energy secretary, I said, why, do you, when do you do this? When do you release the reserves? And she said to me, she said, either a national emergency or a national defense issue. The very next day, Biden says, oh, I'm releasing the reserves to take care of people for the 4th of July weekend. Didn't affect the, I don't think fuel dropped a penny, but all he did was weaken our defenses. And that, and he's continuously making these bonehead decisions because some little punk with a man bun's got his ear and says, oh, this would be a great idea, Mr. President. They run some poll at the CNN boardroom or something mm -hmm. and they get their ideas that way. And that's why the American public is getting screwed and tattooed during all this and, and we're tired of it. And the, the elections couldn't get here soon enough. Absolutely. I, it's at the end of the day, it's about his policies and he's not up. He's not up for, for the job. It's it's been clear, even if he had his mind, even if he was years all there ago. years ago, I had come, I, I've had conversation with him over a year ago, several years ago, actually, about his I think it was his first year in office. And um, and it was clear then his cognizant level was was declining. And now it's just even it, it's so far gone. That I, you know, I watched the debate and, right. I, and I was going to tweet out on my ex account at Tim Burchett. I already had it written out. Mm. I give this debate to Trump. And then I thought, well, I'm going to wait. And then I'm going to wait five minutes in. And then I saw him shuffling out. Yeah. I just went on and hit the send button. <laughs> That's it. It, was up, it. it was over at that point. It was over as soon as he stepped onto stage. And then, of course, it was, it's been over. Congressman Tim yes, Burchett, thank you so much, sir, for joining us.